morning, everyone. Hope we're having a fantastic day. We're having our McLaughlin coffee. Check them out at McLaughlinCoffee.com. Use um, code POKER to get some discount. It's good stuff. I don't know. My chat program just said it may not be working. That's not good. Hope everyone's having a great Friday. I go to the World Series of Poker for the second stent on Sunday night. And then we play a $5,000 tournament on Monday. This is going to be the last a little coffee for a while. I'm probably not going to be doing it from Vegas because, well, timing is a little funny and life is hectic. It's very important to prioritize things. And sorry, this is not the most important thing in my life, even though I know many of you enjoy this. So we will be coming back on the probably 17th or 18th or 19th of July. So you're going to have to deal without me for th two and a half weeks. You'll survive. You'll be okay. Looks like my chat program is working, so good. Good, good, good. Sometimes it all works out. Um, but yeah, so we're going to Vegas. We're gonna play lots and lots of poker tournaments. I'm having a giveaway. We're giving away uh, to three different people. 1% of my World Series of Poker main event. Not sure the URL to, URL to sign up. I think it's jonathanlittlepoker.com slash WSOP, or no, pokercoaching.com slash WSOP. Not entirely sure. Go to Twitter. I just posted about it recently, so check that out. Get your 1%. I actually gave away 1% of all of my World Series action to someone, so actually I've given away 4%. That's okay. Who needs percentages, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's lots of poker happening, and I'm going to do my best. Today... Let's talk about investing in yourself. So many people, they want to do things like get rich quick. Or alternatively, a lot of people have no ambition. They just want to sort of do whatever is expected of them. You have to understand, if you want to get anywhere in life, if you want to have a large amount of success, you must make sure that you are set up to achieve that success, right? What a lot of people do is, I mean, like, I'm just thinking about myself. Um, whenever I was young, I worked at McDonald's, right? There are people who were 40, or 40 years old working at McDonald's who are perfectly content. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to achieve a great amount of, I don't know, notoriety, success, things like this, you have to figure out, you have to be inspired, right? You have to be inspired for something. And from talking to many of those people, they just were not all that inspired. And I think think that's because they have not found their inspiration. And I think most people can get inspired to do things. And you just have to find what you love. Now, fortunately, most of you here enjoy playing poker. So makes it easy. We can talk about playing poker, right? Um, but I mean, it may not be poker. Yeah, I mean, quite often when people go to college, they don't really know what they want to do. And then they kind of fall into something because inevitably they... Um, and inevitably, they, they find something, right? If you try enough things, eventually they'll find something. And that really is it. You have to get out there, you have to experiment, and you have to try things. Somebody says, is my poker material offer range charts? Yes, go to pokercoaching.com slash charts. Why are certain hands like 7-6 suited in 3-betting range? Because they're not good enough to call. Or they're on the cusp of playability, or they help with board coverage. Um, okay, so let's talk about ways to invest in yourself. The most obvious one is education, Right? I'm not necessarily going to say you should or should not go to college because it is now very, very pricey to go to college, especially if you go to a top tier one. And I do think, though, that most people should go to college. I went to college for half of it. I, I quit to play poker, which I think was a good decision for me, but that does not mean it's a good decision for 99.99% .99 of people. And... Getting an education is very important, not just because you have a degree, a piece of paper, but because you get life experiences. You may say, can't I get life experiences without going to college? Certainly you can. I think a pretty good idea would be instead of going to a top college and spending $200,000, take 150000 of that and invest in companies. Become someone who helps companies get off the ground and become successful. Invest in them. You know, put your money at work. Learn about the ups and downs of finance. And that, that is a reasonable strategy, I think, as long as you are ambitious. Again, you have to have ambition. If you don't have ambition, then take your 150K and put it in the bank and make, I don't know, how much? 
How much can you make if you have 150k in the bank? To be fair, most people don't have 150k in the bank. But if you do have 150k in the bank, then you can invest it. I don't know, make 10k a year. Then you get a regular job. It's probably not ideal. You should probably go to college in that case. But I think college does help people make friends, make good connections, and ideally develop ambition. Um, you also want to make sure your ambitions have a future. So often in poker, I hear this where people I remember like this sticks out vividly in my mind. But a long time ago, I met a guy who was bragging about how he was the best six handed pot limit Omaha sit and go player in the world. So first off, how many six handed pot limit Omaha sit and goes run? I did a little bit of research about three or four thirty dollar games ran each day. So if this guy's crushing it. Thirty percent ROI. He can invest one hundred twenty bucks. He'll make forty bucks a day. All right. Yeah. No. Forty. Yeah. Forty bucks a day. Good job. Congratulations. Right. You want to make sure that if you actually are trying to find a career and better yourself long term, you find a game or find a thing to study that has a future. Um, there's nothing wrong with having hobbies. Don't get me wrong. You should have hobbies. But whenever you're looking at something for a career, you also often want to make sure it is either very scalable or the skill is highly valued. One of the one of the two. Um, so anyway. You want to make sure that you learn a skill. Ideally, the earlier in life you can do it, the better. And you want to get really good at it because if you can get really good at it, you will usually be in demand. Now, some skills have a lower, I guess, value compared to others. And you want to think about that, right? I know I loved playing games as a kid. So what did I do? Did I play the game I liked the most? No, I didn't. I played a game, poker, which I liked plenty, plenty fine, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad game by any means, but I played this game instead. This is where I devoted all of my time, and that skill was highly valuable because people play this game for money, and you can actually make good money from playing it, right? Poker we're referring to. Um, other games like chess or Magic the Gathering, great games, but there's not a lot of money in it. And if you're thinking about a career, and you care about money, I do care about being able to you know, make money, then you need to make sure that you are finding something like that. Um, so, a few other things you can invest in pertaining to education. You can invest in learning other languages. It's a very valuable skill because people speak different, um, different languages, right? That's a skill that will always be valuable, at least in the near future. Again, like a lot of things will become irrelevant. Like, for example, if we can put an earpiece in our ear that automatically translates any language, then you know, that skill becomes way less relevant. But in the meantime, that's a very useful thing. Um, you can learn skills that are technical. You can learn skills that are scalable. And you want to figure out ways to help people, especially if the skill that you know they just do not know or do not want to know. Um, all right, next. You can invest in your health. Health is highly important because if you die early or you cannot get around because you're in bad shape, then that's not going to be good for you, right? You want to make sure you live a healthy life. Not just a long life, but a healthy life. And ideally, you probably don't want to invest a ton of time in it. Because imagine you spend four hours a day working out and getting in great shape, and you live an extra few years, you may find you actually spent more time in the gym than you did living longer. So you want to make sure that you are making good use of your time because time is the only real super limited resource we have. And if you squander it, especially doing things you don't like, like I don't like going to the gym, um, it may not be ideal. But if you find you can invest 40 minutes in the gym three days a week and it extends your life some number of years, it very easily could make sense. And it, it does, does make sense. So uh, fitness is very important. Nutrition is also an easy way to live longer, be smarter, think healthier. Spend some time figuring out what is actually um, healthy, right? I used to have be completely oblivious. I was talking to my wife yesterday about how we saw a Pop-Tart commercial and like, yeah, we used to eat Pop-Tarts all the time. And Pop-Tarts are terrible for you. I mean, I remember going to the airport. I would, I would go and I would buy like four, four Pop-Tarts for the day and I'd eat them throughout the day as a snack. And then it's like 2,000 calories of Pop-Tarts. It's completely nonsense. And I didn't know any better. I was uneducated, right? I remember a long time ago, I got I got educated to some extent by um, Andrew Robel. You all know Andrew Robel. He's in great shape. He used to not be in great shape. None of us were in great shape. But he um, got on the fitness kick, gosh, I don't know, 15 years ago. And I looked around and I'm like, huh, maybe I should look into this. 
So I went from drinking Coca-Cola to cranberry juice because that must be more healthy, right? Turns out that's full of sugar. Sugar is not good for you. So now we drink coffee, tea, and water. So that is something you need to be considering. Um, I, I have a blog post, How I Lost 40 Pounds and Got in the Best Shape of My Life. Check it out. Just Google that. It'll come right up. Um, essentially, stop eating unhealthy carbs and stop eating sugar. And that's going to be very beneficial. It'll make you healthier. It'll, it'll give you more stamina. It'll make you stronger. Make you think better. Just all sorts of good things. Let's see. College is very expensive. You're about to start your last semester of college. Congrats. It'll be worth it for the salary you will get afterwards. Well, Ryan, that's the issue a lot of people run into is that they get college loans that cost them $200,000 and then they make 60 k a year. Figure that out. There, there, are, are, there are some like trade schools, like programming trade schools now that are popping up. I don't know their names off the top of my head. Um, I learned about them on the Jason Calacanis podcast, so look that up, where essentially they will take something like 10% of your income for something like five years, capped at some amount. So they teach people over the course of like two years to learn how to be a very good programmer. And then whatever your salary is, they'll get some percentage of it. Not a huge percentage, like 10%. And that often ends up being like, I think maybe the cap is like 50K. So you learn a very, very relevant skill for today, programming, which again, may become obsolete depending on AI and how that works, I don't know. But you, you, know, you know the cost and you know you'll be able to pay it back. And if you don't make any money, if you can't get a job, or the skill comes obsolete, whatever, then you don't know anything. So anyway, that's um, something I would tell someone to do if they did not have a lot of money. Let's see. Great to catch me again. Hello, hello. Most people making the decision to go to college do not have 150K in cash. Indeed, they do not. And um, that's why they end up getting loans that drag them down forever. Guess what? Coffee, coffee isn't healthy. You're right. It's not particularly great. It's better than a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> Guess you should put this Pop-Tart down. Yeah, probably. Um, nowadays, you can learn almost anything on YouTube. It is very true. But again, pre-flop store, we discussed this. You must have ambition. And a lot of people just completely lack ambition, especially if they are taking care, taking care of by others, right? Like, say your parents let you live with them, and you don't need to make any money because your parents give you $500 a week to go goof off. Or you have a you have a job that pays you pays you enough money so you have plenty of money. Like say you spend five hundred bucks a week and you have a job that makes a thousand a week, you may not want to do anything, right? And that's the problem is people get content, and the problem with that is that inevitably inflation goes up, salaries may or may not go up, and you're banking on other people to take care of you. I think it's pretty wise to make sure that you can take care of yourself. And if you can't take care of yourself, you're always depending on people. And you do not want to be a dependent your whole life. Um, next, comfort. You should be investing in comfort. We're discussing investing in yourself today. I think comfort is very, very relevant. You want to ask, what do I do in my life that I do a lot, right? What do I do a lot, personally? I sit in this chair right here. Here's this chair. This is, um, what's this called? Air on chair. I don't know. It costs like... $600, $700. It's a good chair. Makes you have good posture. It's comfortable. Because I'm sitting in this chair a lot. I have a standing desk. Watch this. Ooh. There you go. There you go. Anyway. Um, desk costs like 2000 bucks or something. It's expensive. But it's nice, easy, and it makes my body in better shape. Because you'd rather not be sitting in a chair all day. If you are going to sit in a chair, sit in a good chair. If you are going to be in a, at a chair all the time, try to stand up a lot. And I've set myself up to be in that scenario, right? So what, where else do you spend a lot of time? Well, you spend a lot of time in your shoes. Make sure your shoes are comfortable. Don't wreck your feet. It's not a good idea, right? Um, your bed and your pillow. I think these two are, these are two things that are highly important. Um, I wish I had... I wish I had the opportunity to buy or to look into some of these, you know, quote unquote smart beds. There are a lot of beds now that you'll, you'll see them advertised on Instagram if you're looking, where essentially they can um, adjust your body temperature. They can make the bed softer or more firm, depending on how your body is reacting to the bed at that moment, et cetera, et cetera. They're expensive, but again, it may be worth it because you spend, what, 
30% of your life in the bed, you should probably make sure the bed is taking care of your body. So those are things you can invest in. Let's see what all of you are saying. Is becoming a poker pro a good business move for the future long term? Depends on you, right? Do you even like playing poker? If you don't like playing poker, the answer is obviously no. Should you finish the last year of college if you're already making 100K a year playing poker and you know you won't ever be able to get a real job that comes even close to playing that much? Yes, I think you should. And the reason I think you should is because poker may die at some point, whereas having a skill set and a degree will always be at least somewhat valuable. But yeah, I would tell you to finish it. I quit with about a year and a half left. When I quit, I was making about 250K a year. And if I got out of college, I'd make like 50K a year being an engineer. So I, I either, I personally should have either quit sooner or I should have finished, I think. And I probably should have just quit sooner. That's, that's the obvious decision. Um, I had social pressure to not quit. It was just like obvious throughout my whole life. Yes, you're going to go to college and you're going to get a degree. And I guess I got over it at some point. But I probably should have quit college like a year into college, maybe six months into college when I was already making, you know, 50K a year, 100K a year. Um, and I, I would have made, made way more money. And who knows where we would have ended up. But if, you're, if you have one year left, I would tell you for sure you should finish it. It's, it's obvious. Is investing in poker coaching or in theory any educational thing when you're over the age of 60 not worth it? It's a good question, actually, because... Once you're over 60, do you actually have a lot of time to utilize it? But you do, especially if it's not actually that expensive. What are my thoughts on bots? Bots will always get better. Being honest with yourself is some of the best personal investment you feel. Yes, you must be honest with yourself. You thought I'd be in Vegas. Oh, I have a family. I have two boys and a wife. And this period of the World Series, the middle, is a lot of tiny buy-in, no-limit hold'em tournaments. Like 1,500 is the biggest one, I think. And then a bunch of high stakes mixed games. I don't want to play small no limit hold'em. I don't want to play big mixed games. So we're going out on the 30th. We're going to be playing on the first. There's a 5K, then there's a main event, then there's another 10K, there's another 5K, there's another 10K, and we'll play all those. It's all about making the most of the time you have. And I would rather be home with my family than playing smaller buy and no limit hold'em tournaments. All right, you think some people have the wrong idea about how they're pursuing or how pursuing, it's about doing what you love, not about what will make you the most money. Well, it depends on if you need money, right? When should you include overbetting in your game? Go to pokercoaching.com slash premium, sign up to the cash game course, and we will discuss it. But imagine you love um, weaving baskets. Let's pretend you enjoy weaving baskets. I don't know how much the most expensive baskets in the world are, but they're probably not all that expensive. Imagine you don't even like being creative. Imagine you just like doing it. You just like the act of putting a basket together. And you know, if you make a basket, you can sell the basket for $7 on Etsy. That's the price they go for. You can make one basket every four hours. So your skill is worth $2 an hour. Minus fees, call it a dollar an hour. All right. You love doing this. It's your favorite thing in the world to do. But you can only make a dollar an hour. Should you do this full time? Maybe you become a little bit more efficient. Maybe you start using slightly better materials, whatever. Maybe you double your income to $2 an hour. Is it really worth it? And I would generally say no, because if you spend all your time doing it, you will be destitute, right? And you don't want to be destitute. So some amount of money is important. I don't think you need a ton of money. In America, maybe you need like 40K a year, maybe 30K a year. Um, in other places, you can live cheaper. Hey, maybe you can live in somewhere somewhere else and make um, a dollar an hour and be perfectly fine. But making a living wage, I think, is valuable. And um, that's important. Where's my boy James? I don't know where he is. He's out there somewhere. Um, you can lose everything except your education. Well, to be fair, you can, your brain can get hit and you can lose that too. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you don't lose your education. You don't lose your skills. How much is the premium membership? Poker Coaching Premium is $99 per month. It includes the full Cash Game Masterclass. We may sell that in the future for $300. So do the math, right? It's obvious Poker Coaching Premium is way cheaper. Um, it also includes 70 30-minute courses on specific topics that my students ask me to make videos on. It includes many more hand quizzes each month. It includes all sorts of stuff. And, well, after comfort, you need to be investing in experiences, fun, your hobbies, enjoyment. And 
doing something that you don't succeed at is often not enjoyable for most people. And I know most of you like here like poker and Poker Coaching Premium is a great way to have lots to study. It's a great way to have plenty of material to study and it's a great way to improve your skills immensely at poker. I made Poker Coaching Premium to be the site that I wanted. To be fair, I made Poker Coaching, that was step one, quizzes and in-depth homework challenges. And then I, I was asking, what else do I want? Well, I wanted webinars by other people. We have webinars made monthly by some of the best players in the world. We have um, Alex Fitzgerald, Matt Affleck, Evan Jarvis. We, we're gonna try to have guest webinars. We have two by Fader Holtz, one of the best players ever. And um, all of these are included in Poker Coaching Premium. We're just gonna be including more and more content. Think Netflix, right? Netflix, but for the best poker coaching available. Um, just finished Doyle Brunson's first book. Good. All right, let's see. Uh, but yeah, so invest in yourself in terms of making your hobbies enjoyable, right? You want to figure out, like, how, how do I do this like I like to do it? So, and then figure out how to do that. For example, my hobby is playing Magic the Gathering. And the way I like playing Magic the Gathering is very different than the way many people do. Many people, they want to play with the new cards all the time. I like to not have to devote a lot of time to it. So how can you be competitive and not devote a lot of time to it? You play the older formats because your skills remain strong and the, uh, the player pool or the card pool does not change all that much. I know I'm getting into random specifics. But essentially, you want to find a way to make your hobby work for you. So if you like playing poker as a hobby, first off, get at least decent at it. Again, go to PokerCoaching.com. You can get a free trial and try it all out. Um, go to PokerCoaching.com and do that. That way you're not off, so you're not just getting crushed and losing all of your money. And then play a game that works for you. So for many people who have a job, you may only get to play poker one day a week or two days a week, and even then only maybe three or four hours. Well, don't play tournaments, right? Because tournaments require you to be there all day. Instead, play cash games where you can go play for a few hours and then be done. And alternatively, you may find you get to have one full day off per week. Well, you better not be playing two day tournaments, right? So you need to figure out exactly what works for you and also what you enjoy. Maybe you find that you enjoy playing mixed games. I don't know. Maybe you enjoy only playing No Limit Hold'em. Maybe you enjoy Pop Limit Omaha, whatever. You need to find what you enjoy and make the most of your free time. And, um, you know, ideally, your hobby also has some potential upside because, like someone mentioned earlier, do what you love, right? And if your hobby is, like myself, playing games, probably spend time playing games that have a future upside. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate, but I love playing chess and I love playing Magic the Gathering, but neither of those have too much potential upside because there's just no money in it. There's some money in it. You can be a good Magic player, make lots of content, be a best streamer, maybe make 100K a year, but that's like the best in the world, right? You don't want to compare yourself to the best in the world. You want to, or you don't want to look at the best in the world and think, I can do that. You can, but um, you want to... Instead, think what is like the medium making, who's pretty good, the top 1%, right? Maybe you can get the top 1%. It's hard to get the top 0.01%. But top 1% is doable. Maybe they're making 30K a year. Is it worth investing a ton of time to make 30K a year? Probably not. What's the best way to play your A game after a bad beat or losing a hand? Don't care about losing a hand. Why do you care if you lose a hand? Get over that. You're going to lose hands. You know what you signed up for. You think with all the training options for poker players, there will always be enough recreational players to keep poker profitable. First off, you have to understand, when I play poker, I'm not playing against awful players. I'm playing against pretty good players. But I'm better than pretty good players. And it's all about finding people you can beat. So, I mean, you can be actually not even that good and still make plenty of money playing poker as long as you have a good player pool. I mean, you see this in private games all the time where, like, the biggest winners there will not even play, like, 5, 10, no limit. There's a well-known player who did this. Um, guess I shouldn't out him, but like he would just never play like 5, 10, or 10, 20 at Bellagio, but he plays 200, 400 all the time in private games. Probably smart, because he's better than the players in those games, right? So it's very important to find player pool. Let's see. If right now there's smaller buying World Series event, that means more bad players. Why wouldn't you want to take advantage of that? Because it's a math game. You want to ask how much money you can invest, what's your ROI? Let's presume they have a $1,500 tournament. Let's say I'm going to be great 
I'm gonna make 100% ROI, which probably is not the case. So let's say you're gonna make 100% ROI, you make $1,500 in the day or in the tournament. All right, what if I play 5K instead with 30% ROI, which I actually think is a reasonable win rate. Well, now we're making 30% of 5K, which is 1,500. So we have the same win rate for a bigger buy-in, but a smaller field, so variance will be comparable. But I'm not drastically overestimating my win rate. One of 30% is reasonable, 100% is not. So let's assume I actually have 50% ROI in the 1,500 event. Now we make 750 a day. Would I rather make 750 a day or 1,500 a day? I'd rather make 1,500 a day. So that's why we are playing the bigger tournaments. $100 is a fair price. Look, I'm not trying to gouge anyone. I'm trying to give people ways to get better at poker. And look, if you play one two no limit or $200 buy-in tournaments, $100 a month for you is not a lot of money. And that's really the goal, right? I'm not trying to make a $1,000 course like some people do. And I want to make sure it's something that is sustainable for all of you. And also, I want to make sure I'm not going to get hosed because you all may not know this. We spend tons of money on content each month. These poker coaches don't work for free. And um, somebody has to pay for that. And I certainly don't want to get hosed. So we have to charge something. Of course, if you have a poker coaching membership, nothing's going to change. You're still just getting tons and tons of added value because you'll have access to some of those webinars, et cetera, et cetera. So all I try to do is spew value everywhere. I spew my value to everyone. And with any luck, they'll be happy. And we'll help some people. Um... Let's see, we're gonna be vlogging during the World Series. Yes, I made one video blog already. You can find it at YouTube or jonathanlittlepoker.com slash YouTube. So check it out. Can you tell me about your premiums, poker coaching premium compared to Upswing Lab? I have signed up for all the training sites and this one is much more comprehensive. Poker coaching premium is much more comprehensive. You have to understand a lot of these training sites, they have either videos on just all sorts of stuff or they have videos that are just not all that in depth or they're relatively short. And Poker Coaching Premium is very clearly laid out. It's also lots of very specific content and it is easily searchable so you can find exactly what you want. I wanted to make a database that essentially answered every question you have about poker. And if you're a Poker Coaching member and your question is not answered there for some reason, send me an email and I'll make the video within a week. And then you'll have that topic there for you to study, right? Also, it's going to sound bad. A lot of poker training sites are not actually made by people who play poker. <laughs> they're, more, they're more of um, personalities. And I'm not a personality. I'm a poker player. And the people I hire to make content are poker players. And we've had long-term success. What ratio do I recommend studying to playing? In anything, you want to ask, am I actually good enough to do it yet? If you're not good enough to do it, you should be doing a lot of studying. For example, if I was to become a doctor, I'm going to decide to become a doctor today. Do I hop into being a doctor? No, that'd be dumb. I'm going to study for a long time. Poker's kind of the same. Um, unless you don't care about money, right? If you don't care about money, then hop right in. Let's see. Pedro says you already have a three-year poker coaching membership. There's tons of quizzes, challenges, et cetera. What is the value of paying $99 on top of that? It's not $99 on top of that, Pedro. You must have missed the email. It is $60 on top. And also... There's just a ton more content. You have to ask, like, do you want more? Are you actually trying to get to the next level? Some people are, some people aren't. And there's nothing wrong with either one, right? I mean, certainly you do not need hundreds of hours of poker training if you play poker two days a week and you don't really care all that much, right? But if you are trying to actually make significant money from poker, you should be studying these things. And look, the way I always view poker coaching, I mean, I probably spent, gosh, $500 a month in poker coaching memberships just because I study a lot. It's essentially free, right? If you're making a few thousand a month from poker, like what is the cost of $100? It's essentially irrelevant. And, um, you know, you, you it's just free. It's stone free. In terms of like the actual money that you can be winning, or imagine you're like losing a thousand bucks a month of poker. If you just stop losing a thousand a month, if you start paying a hundred dollars a month to a training site and studying, it's just like obvious. All right, let's see. How long do you keep playing before thinking about doing this as a profession? You have a 30 to, 40 hour, 30 to $40 hourly rate. I would tell you to try to make your hourly rate even higher. Play slightly bigger games, push the boundaries, continue moving up, and see how it goes. And um, if 30 to $40 an hour is fine and good for you, and you know you can do it consistently, take, take a vacation from your job. Take a month or, um, or something like that. 
and that will use that time to play poker extensively. Shan says it's only $60 to upgrade a membership. It's not $60, no, $60 per month. The total cost per month is $100, $99 per month for Poker Coaching Premium. If you are already paying $39 for your regular membership, you just get an upgrade for $60 on top. $39 plus $60 is $99. But no, it is $99 per month total. Let's see. You got hassled for not turning in your ticket because you wanted to wait till the, before the button passed you. Perry, that is out of line and considered cheating. Is there a cure to a downswing? Yeah, play better. Why aren't you moving your content to Twitch community? You think a new poker generation poker comes from content, you have great content. Does, does Switch have a YouTube channel, a YouTube-like thing? If Twitch has a YouTube-like thing, I would certainly be willing to post the content there. Let me tell someone to look into this. It's called Twitch community. Also, this is on Twitch, by the way. Um, it's on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Periscope. Is that right? How do you personally get great at poker? I studied all the time, and I worked with a lot of great players. Let's see. Oh, yeah, do we have any swag? Yes, we have um, poker coaching patches available at the DMB Poker booth. JC Morning says they don't have any. Oh, tell my guy to get them there. Really, the whole purpose of the show is to make a to-do list of things I have to do today. Um, let's see. Poker coaching gave you a new outlook on life. Good. That's what we're trying to do. Help you improve your poker and improve your life. Plaza says $99 is great, except you live in the UK and you get scammed on exchange rates. Cannot help you with that one. Although, maybe you can find someone who will trade you pounds for USD. Look into that. Thanks for all I do in poker. My books have been instrumental to making me a winning player. Good. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Zip says, think about what you do and why. Let's have fun and learn great stuff from the master. I don't know if I'm a master, but yes. What did I read when I first started playing? I read every poker book on the market. This is not all of my book collection. <laughs> um, I read all of the books. I have read, if I had to guess, like of the books generally available, I probably read like 90% of them. And... Before I started playing, I read like literally everyone I could get my hands on. I think I spent something like 900 bucks or so on books before I ever played poker for any significant money, like $50 buy-in. And I think it was smart, right? You need to study. I treated it like becoming a doctor. I'm not going to go become a doctor and not study. And back then, you have to understand, when I started, there were no training sites. So There's nothing like that. So the only option was books. So I did that. If I was learning today, I mean, I'll tell you exactly what I do. I'd sign up for Poker Coaching Premium and go through the content, and grind the content, and grind cash games as much as I could. That is exactly what I would do, and that's what I made the site for. I made the site for young Jonathan Little, and really for present-day Jonathan Little, because like I said, I study from the other coaches. Whenever we have these webinars by Matt Affleck, who I think is a fantastic cash game player, I'm learning a ton from it. But we have stuff with Fedor Holtz. It's like the best tournament player. I'm learning from it, right? And I made what I wanted to consume, and... I also asked all my students what they wanted, and they told me very clearly they wanted a large database of content so they could search it and find the answer to literally any question they have. They also wanted a cash game course. It's 29 parts long. I made that. They, um, they wanted more quizzes. We made more quizzes. Basically, I made everything they wanted. <laughs> Our coaching videos updated for Cash Game Masterclass. Carter, not sure what you're saying. If you log into PokerCoaching.com, scroll down. There is a Cash Game Masterclass available. Let me see if I can show it to you right now. It's not going to work for Instagram. Sorry, Instagram. Uh, let's see. We go to Classes. Let's pull this right over here. Scroll down. Cash Game Masterclass. Click right here. And then um, here it is. We have Introduction, Equity, Ranges, post flop Bet Sizing, Raising Limpers, Facing a Raise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Flop. This here, I think, is um, by far the best explanation I have ever seen by anyone on when to bet and when to check and how much to bet. may not sound uh, too complicated, but it actually kind of is because you have to think about range advantage, equity advantage, position, how ranges interact with boards, et cetera, et cetera. And um, this is a big video. Then we have lots of examples, and we have a, a brief summary. It's not really that brief. Like I said, it's, it's pretty in-depth. We discuss multi-way on the flop, facing a flop raise, the turn strategies, river strategies, short stack, deep stacks, shorthanded, straddle pots, bankroll management, mindset, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, 
that's what all of that is. And um, I made it like two weeks ago. So is it updated? Yes, it's updated. I made it two weeks ago. Let's see. You looked at the video library, some were a year old. I mean, look, a year is not all that much. And also these are on specific topics, like things like mindset, right? Mindset advice is not gonna change a whole lot. But I do wanna make it very clear. I have a lot of content. I've been doing this for a long time. And I regularly prune the stuff that I think is not still relevant. A lot of people out there, they make their course five years ago and then they still sell it, which is, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I, again, I'm trying to always give you the best content I can. And if something is out of date, I don't sell it anymore. So there you have it. A lot, a lot of my old stuff has stood the test of time, which is really the purpose of everything I did. I actually went back through my first book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, the other day, and it's still incredibly up to date. I didn't exactly know why I did what I did back then, but it turns out the strategies I was using back then were very close to the GTO strategy. So how, how lucky is that? We were playing great all the time. Um, let's see. If you're cash poor, should you be negotiating a higher split in your deal? I mean, I don't know. Do whatever you think makes sense. Really, staking is not a personal thing. It is a business arrangement. So if you're not happy with your business arrangement, find a new one. If you can't find a new one, then... Um, then change, right? Or, or be happy with where you are. Did you win the thing you voted for me two months ago? I did not. Brad Owen won. I work with Brad Owen. He has quizzes on PokerCoaching.com. So pers Poker Personality here also is working with us. Deep Stack Cash versus Fedor. Who has the edge? Probably Fedor. You have to presume the best player in the world is um, probably better than me. <laughs> Jonathan, Alex, or Matt alone are worth the price of premium to get all three is kind of like a free roll. That's really it, Ami. I wanted to make it so obvious to sign up that it's like a no-brainer, right? Um, I mean, for example, take Netflix, right? Signing up for Netflix is kind of a no-brainer for like, whatever it is, $13 a month, you get to replace cable. If you care about poker, $100 a month is free, especially if you're going to have a coach for five hours a month at $300 an hour or something like that. It's, it's know, one fifteenth of the price. And um, it's really just what people value, right? But I, I get a lot of people don't value education and that's okay. You like to hear how I developed my online content. I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. There's a few podcasts I like. One's called the Smart Passive Income Podcast. One is called the uh, Tim Ferriss Podcast. One is um, This Week in Startups. These three have been very influential in helping me. Uh, let's see. What characters of each S am I looking for? Man, I don't know. I just put all my money in Wealthfront now. Wealthfront is a platform that balances your portfolio. They do everything for you. You load your money in there and you forget about it. All right. So Poker Coach is by far the best site you've ever used, bar none. Well, thank you. That's, that's the goal. And we're trying to make it even better. That's really it, is we are trying to make it even better and better and better and better and better. Till again, there is no, it's like the clear decision, right? And I'm glad some of you are realizing that. But yes, going back to the idea, you want to invest in yourself. What else can you invest in? Um, you can invest in experiences, right? You can go meet people. You can do neat things, interesting things. You can expand your horizons, right? Like so many people say going to Europe for a month is like the most influential thing I, I did or the most um, impactful thing that I did. Or something like that. You hear people say things like that all the time. And um, what's happening here in my chat program? Come on, chat program. Um, but yeah, so you want to get experience. Experiences open your eyes. They, they broaden your horizons and they let you think of things and realize things that you thought were not possible are actually possible. And you want to have big, big dreams, big goals, but realize... You wanna make sure your dreams are actually doable. For example, for a long time, I thought I wanna be on the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour and be a poker player and have kids and do all these things. And it's just ridiculous. The dream was irrelevant, first off, because being on the Magic Pro Tour is not worth much. And it's not, it's not my biggest priority. So you know what you do? Forget about it. You're not gonna do it, it's okay. I um, wanted to learn a language for a new time, Spanish. I was trying to learn Spanish forever. We know a few words. 
Hola. But um, I am not going to like go to Spain for three months to live to learn the language very, very well. It's just not practical. And you may say, yeah, you can use your apps on your phone and learn it great, which, you know, sure. But do I want to devote an hour a day for the next hundred days to it? It really isn't even that much time commitment, really. But no, I don't want to do it. I have too much stuff going on right now. So it's not a priority. So you need to figure out what is actually a priority in your life. And a lot of people don't come up with their priorities or they want, or they just want everything and then inevitably they get nothing. So you want to make sure that your priorities line up with what you actually want in life. Um, so yeah, to sum it up, we have to get, we have to get going so we have a meeting at 10 o'clock. You need to invest in yourself clearly, which means education, health, comfort, and then your enjoyment. And not doing these things will inevitably make you unhappy somewhere down the road. Um, and I want you to be happy, right? I want you all to be happy. At the end of the day, I don't care if you're good at, or bad at poker. I want you to be a happy human and have a great life. Do you live stream every day? We do a little coffee Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I'm not playing poker, 9 a.m. Eastern time, but I'm going to play poker for the next two and a half weeks, so you're going to miss that. All of the past episodes are available at uh, jonathanlittlepoker.com slash YouTube, as, as well as just tons of other free content there for you. Um, so, since I'm going away for the next three weeks, what I want all of you to do, if you actually care about getting good at poker... Go to pokercoachme.com slash premium and sign up. And then every morning, 9 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days a week, instead of watching this, because it's not going to be here, watch two 30-minute videos. Watch two 30-minute videos each morning. If you do that for the next 20 days, you're going to get through 20 hours of educational poker content, right? It's kind of like I am giving you private coaching or my other coaches for... $100. So what's 20, 20 hours divided by $100? Is that $5 an hour? Yeah. So you're going to spend $5 each morning. You're going to give me $5 each morning to bring you high quality education on whatever specific topic you are struggling with in poker. And if you do that for the next 20 days, you are going to become a significantly better poker player. It's going to be way more beneficial than me talking to you about random stuff like we do here. Um, so that's what I definitely suggest you do. PokerCoaching.com slash premium, sign up, do it. How often do you put new videos on Poker Coaching? So we've been very um, cautious with our guarantees, but we are going to be uploading two new classes each month, minimum. We're going to be uploading two webinars by other coaches, minimum. So right there, it's um, four or five hours worth of content. Um, for Poker Coaching, uh, this is for Poker Coaching Premium. For Poker Coaching Premium, we're going to have a bunch more quizzes added, added each month. Go to PokerCoachingPremium.com and you'll read exactly what we are guaranteeing. But I can already tell you, we make a point to over-deliver. If you all know how I work, how I operate, I try to drastically over-deliver because I want everyone to be happy and know they're getting an undeniable value. So anyway, whenever I come back in three weeks, I want you all to tell me what all you've studied and what all you've learned and how that has impacted your poker game. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, do it. I know you're here at 9 a.m. You're doing, you're doing this. If you're watching this on your phone, you can watch Poker Coaching Premium videos on your phone. You can take the quizzes on your phone. You can do all of that. So go do that. Better yourself. Invest in yourself. And remember, investing in yourself is like really just the most obvious thing you can do. It is such a value. And when you're presented such an amazing value, don't turn it down. All right. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. And I will talk to you all when I talk to you. Of course, if you ever have any questions, you can um, ask me on Twitter, at Jonathan Little. You can send an email to support at pokercoaching.com. That'll be that. Good luck in your games. Have fun.